with the Ambernick XX line growing at an X potential rate, huh? You like that? I thought it would be a good time to explore yet another of the custom firmware options available for the H700 chipset. Now the good thing about this chipset is that Ambernick is apparently putting it in all of their lower end budget models, which means for the most part, if it works in the XX Plus or the XXH, it's gonna work in the 28XX or the uh, flip, the, what are they calling it? The, the Clamberneck, the XXSP, whatever, the little, little Game Boy Advance one. They should all be relatively cross compatible. The reason I chose the H as my test bed is because I'm really excited about the flip. The uh, 28XX will be here probably in the next day or two, which will be pretty cool. A little smaller version of this without sticks. But I'm really excited about the clamshell one, and that one will have sticks. My logic being that if it works with the sticks on here, it should work in the clamshell model. I will be honest, Ambernick has done a better job of slowly increasing the uh, functionality of the stock firmware. But it's not really as good as the custom ones you can get. Today, we're gonna try Botticera 40. Now it's in beta, but is a pretty stable beta. And uh, heck, Botticera, we've tried Botticera on mini PCs. We've tried Botticera on Windows handhelds. I've even run Botticera on a bar top arcade of my own invention, patent pending. But I haven't run it on a little Linux based Ambernick or Pow Kitty system until today. And you know what's great? It's really, really easy to flash. Gary had some footage of me downloading and extracting and installing while I explain this. Your first step is you're gonna to go to the GitHub, you're gonna to go to the latest release, you're gonna download the image file. Mine came zipped as a .gz or something. You extract that with WinRAR. I know you've paid your license. You haven't been using it for free for the last 12 years. You extract the image file .img and you use Belena Etcher or WinDisk Imager or whatever. I like WinDisk Imager 32 because Belena Etcher will crash sometimes and Win32 hasn't bit me in the butt yet. So you extract it onto a blank formatted SD card. See, I put it on this 128 gigabyte card. You put it into your uh, handheld. There you go. And then you power it on. You're gonna see this little screen with all of the systems you can play and a bar will appear on the bottom. That means you haven't screwed it up too bad. Once this loads, you're gonna have a menu with all your games, but uh, you won't actually have games on here. You gotta turn it off and pop it back into the computer. You can transfer over your legally obtained BIOS into the BIOS folder and put your ROMs into the ROMs folder. Make sure the systems match. It's pretty easy at this point. If you want an in-depth tutorial, let me know. Otherwise, I'll assume you can copy and paste. Your next step is put the SD card back into the system, turn it on, and whoa, here you go. Now you're in Botticera. I'm using a theme called Carbon NX, Carbo, Co Carbo NX? I don't know. It's pretty bare bones. I kind of like it. And you have all your games and you have all of your Botticera goodness. So you'll notice if you've done everything correctly, you'll have all the different systems for the games you put on here. Pfft, I put over 1900 Nintendo games on there. Almost 800 Super Nintendo and you see the rest. I Maybe, hmm, you know what? Maybe the 128 car was a little bit overboard, but I do have a ton of extra room. I can always add a ton of PlayStation games on there and call it a day. So this chipset, we've done it to death now. It kind of peaks at some N64 and some PSP. Uh, I would recommend maybe your role-playing game, PSP games on here, and any of your less demanding N64 games. But Botticera itself is pretty slick. It has box art, it has a scraper built in. I'm running that Carbon X theme, but you can run all sorts of other stuff if you want and it has all of your uh, emulation station Botticera settings you've come to love. You can update through Wi-Fi, you can scrape your box art. Heck, let's start scraping while we talk. You can mess with game collections. A uh, cool thing to do with Botticera and any of these emulation station type derivatives is to make a custom collection. So if you want all your game of the month stuff in one collection, you could do that through here. You can change your user interface, you can set up your retro achievements and do all your normal Botticera stuff. But you know what else you could do? You can play games, so let's do that. One issue with Botticera, and it's not really an issue, it's more of a learning curve, is that maybe you have memorized all of the different hotkeys. Well, guess what? Uh, Botticera will throw you on your head. So I set mine to use this function button up here as the hotkey, instead of using my triggers for save and load, you have to hold this button down and you can save using Y and then you can run around and then load using X. For fast forward, instead of using L2 or R2, you gotta hold down your right trigger. You can rewind if you have it enabled and all your other stuff is a little bit different. However, 
If you use Bodicera for like, I don't know, 25 minutes, you'll pick it up. It's one of those things where uh, you have to reset your brain a little bit, but once you do, you're good to go. Now you can play NES, Super Nintendo, Genesis, PlayStation, all that stuff without any issues. You start to run into problems when you hit some N64 and some PSP. And that's uh, just a limitation of the chipset. Bodicera, I feel like, I don't have any empirical data, but it feels like it's slightly better performance just because maybe they've taken out some of the overhead and they've optimized things. And you do have the option to uh, change your cores. So if you're having problems and stuff like N64, you can always switch emulators and maybe uh, get a better experience. And so you're easier to run N64 games through here. Not too bad. And I haven't even fiddled around with the core. You're harder to run stuff though, it's gonna be a completely different story. No matter how much you fiddle fart around with the core, Cruising USA is never going to be quite right. Oh, there goes the audio. Yeah, N64 on here. Eh, if it works, uh-oh, uh-oh, <laughs> that didn't work. If it works, or if it's lower end, it's a bonus. Uh, I wouldn't buy this to play N64, and that goes for the entire chipset, and not even Botticera can make something like Cruising USA play at 60 fps with you know perfect audio sync it's just the limitation of the chip is too much but you don't even get n64 stock so you have improved a little bit just by installing bodicera you can also do a ton of ports on here i haven't installed any just because i you know just set up the card right now but you can put all of your favorite ports on here and as long as the system's powerful enough to run them you got all sorts of cool games on here that are just well beyond the scope of what would come stock let's try some ds you can get the options by holding down function and b and you can change your options in here to uh, do your screen orientation. You can do a single screen. So you're going to save this for everything. Now you can have a single screen experience and flip screens using L2. So if it's a game that requires touch, you can theoretically use the right trigger to touch. But that's, that's burdensome. I wouldn't play a ton of DS games on here unless it's something you can do one screen and you know you can do one screen. Whoa. And single screen DS on here is actually really, really nice. I mean, look how beautiful this is. Whoa, almost died. That's what you get. And let's, uh, let's finish up with some PSP. Now, PSP is at the absolute limit of what this chip can do. So if the game works, it's a bonus. Kind of the same as N64. If it works, it's a bonus. None of the XX line yet has a screen that's uh, well suited for PSP. So you're gonna get wasted space on the top and bottom because it's expecting a wider screen. Ooh, let's turn Vulcan on. I broke it, don't turn Vulcan on. Crap. Wait a minute. Well, PSP, you definitely don't wanna turn on uh, Vulcan. Don't do that because you have to take the SD card out. You have to manually edit the configuration file and delete Vulkan, add OpenGL back in, and then it'll run. And uh, just just don't turn Vulkan on on your XX line. A game like Tekken 6 is going to be a little bit difficult to run. It'll, uh, it'll be playable with frame skip, but the uh, FPS gets pretty low, and it's just it's not the ideal situation. So I would treat PSP on here kind of the same as N64. It's cool to have if you have a PSP game that you just absolutely want to run on the go. More power to you, but uh, it's not going to be an enjoyable experience. Oh, heck. Let's be, let's be Nina. Punch him in the face, Nina. Jeez, Yosemitsu, you got a freaking lightsaber and you got beat that bad? So yeah, Tekken on here, ugh, not great, but something uh, a little easier to run, like, hmm, say, Star Ocean 2? A slower paced, less graphically intensive game, like, you know, Star Ocean 2 or a lot of other JRPGs. You could probably have an okay time. You're still not gonna get the right screen ratio. But yeah, PSP is just like N64. I wouldn't buy it to play these systems, but it can play some in a pinch. Well, Gary, it's time for What Did We Learn? This is going to be pretty short and sweet because we learned that Botticera isn't just for mini PCs and arcade boxes that you make by yourself in a garage. No, Botticera is a pretty viable option. It might be the best option for some of the systems in the XX line. I'm really excited about using this for the Ambernic Flip 
the uh, the Game Boy Advance one. But I do have this Botticera card already set up, already configured, ready to go for any of the XX line that I want to toss it into. And that is a cool thing about this is that they're all cross compatible for the most part. So so far as we know now. <laughs> I just wanted to give you guys an idea of what Botticera looks like on this H700XX line. Ambernick's doing their damnedest to make some sort of weird, uh, like, like Sherman tanks. You guys, you guys watch way too much military history stuff? Like Sherman tanks, you had your basic Sherman tank, then you had four or five variants, and then you had these little special variants, like you'd take the turret off and you'd make it into a little self-propelled artillery, or you'd take something else off and now it's a, an APC, or you, you fiddle with it a little bit, now it can go underwater. But it's all the same kind of kind of guts, and I feel like that's what Ambernick's trying to do here. They want to have one chipset with what one, two, three, uh, four, five, five at least little handhelds, all using the same chipset, which helps streamline the logistics of the operating systems. And it's in your favor that if you get one or more of them, you can have a card pre-populated with an operating system and swap them around, which is pretty cool. Botticera itself provides a very robust, a very um, nuts and bolts level kind of operating system. You can get real deep into the weeds and adjust settings for not just specific emulators, but heck, specific games. And that's a lot more than you can do on stock and more than you can do on some of the other custom firmware options. I've tried to make this pretty short and sweet. If you want a real in-depth tutorial on how to install this beyond my basic, I don't know, 30 seconds of here, do this, this, and this, we do have a written guide available and we have some other videos available. And heck, just leave a leave a comment. Say, Zoo, you idiot, I don't know how to do step three. And I'll, I'll walk you through it, or someone else will probably walk you through it better than I can. The people in the comments are usually smarter than the idiot making the video. So good job on that, gang. If you liked the video, please subscribe, like, do all that jazz. We always appreciate when you like and subscribe to the video. It makes me feel like I've accomplished something more than sitting in my basement talking into the void. Don't get me wrong, I like talking into the void. It's just concerning because sometimes the void talks back. And uh, me and Gary and Quinlan and Jack the Cat, we're all getting a little worried about how often the void talks back. So if you could, maybe you could talk back in the comments and maybe, uh, maybe, maybe rest me back from the brink of insanity. All right, we'll see you later. Goodbye.